What's good y'all? Today I'm going to teach you guys how to make your own heart-shaped shoulder bag with lining and an adjustable shoulder strap like this. This is a great daily use bag with lots of potential for customization. I've made a few of these before and they've always been a hit. Originally when I started releasing patterns, I wasn't going to release any for specific designs of mine, but a lot of people have been asking for this one, so I figured why not. The link to the pattern is below. Once you get it, it'll be emailed to you as a PDF and you can print it off right at home. The pattern will give you the extra notes that you need and some chances to win some free things. And then this video will give you the step-by-step -step tutorial as well as some extra information to help you make this bag come to life. As you can see, I did some extra things to customize this bag, but the focus of this video is gonna be making this heart-shaped bag in its simplest form. I'd say this pattern is in the intermediate difficulty range, but at the end of this video, I will share some things that'll help maybe make this bag a little bit more beginner friendly, but without further ado, let's get into it. All you're going to need is the fabric of your choice. I'm using denim, the lining fabric of your choice. I'm using lightweight cotton and then interfacing heavyweight backing. I'm using Decoville heavy, the pattern two one inch D-rings, the swivel hooks and a slider for the shoulder strap and rivets, glue and tape are optional. You'll print the pattern at 100% scale. I recommend using a heavier paper like cardstock. You'll wanna check this test square to make sure it printed properly as well. Now you can start cutting out all of your pattern pieces. You wanna be as precise as possible because millimeters matter in bag making. You can start matching the numbers on your backing pieces. Then you'll tape the pattern pieces together with both sides lined up as perfectly as you can. Some of the pieces say cut on fold and you can cut those on the fold or what I do is I print them twice, mirror one of the pieces and tape them together. Now my pieces are ready to go and I can start cutting. For the rectangular pieces, you can cut from the pattern piece or what I do is I just pull the measurements and cut with the ruler instead. Regardless, you can start cutting your pieces now. Each pattern piece will tell you how many to cut from each fabric and I recommend marking the middle of each piece as you cut it. This will help later. Once everything is cut, you should have two base pieces from the main fabric, two from the lining fabric and two from the inner facing, one bottom strip piece cut from the main fabric, one from the lining and one from the inner facing, two top strip pieces from the main fabric, two from the lining and two from the inner facing, one D-ring strap piece cut from the main fabric, and then all your heavyweight backing pieces, so the two base pieces, one bottom strip piece and two top strip pieces. Now we're gonna do some prep work, starting with the backing. The heavyweight backing is smaller than its respective piece because we don't wanna sew through it. So you'll start by marking out a half inch around all of your pieces. You'll use this as a guide to center your backing pieces. Your backing pieces should match up perfectly on the outside of those lines. As you can see, it should be exactly a half inch from the edge if you cut your pieces precisely. Now we can get all of our backing pieces in place. You'll You'll want to iron them well to make sure they're fully adhered and make sure everything stays lined up as you iron. Since the backing isn't in the seam, we want an extra layer of protection to hold it in place. So we'll add the interfacing on top, which will sandwich the backing and keep it in place. So we'll iron the interfacing on, making sure to press the edges around the backing to really seal it in. Now your pieces should look like this with the backing and interfacing fused on. We're gonna make the strap for the D-rings now. I'll start by marking the middle on the back side. You could just fold both sides in and iron it, but I prefer to glue it to make it extra precise and the stiffness from the glue adds some extra durability. So I'll get some glue spread on the back, then fold one side into the line, pressing it well as I go, then fold the other side into the edge we just folded. Now the piece is ready. It should be one inch thick and I like to double check the length to make sure it didn't get stretched when I glued it. Now we can get the D-rings on. I'll start by marking three inches from the edge on the wrong side of the strap and another mark at one and a half inches from the edge. That middle mark is where the D-ring will be once it's folded and we don't want to get glue on the D-ring. So I'll mark three eighths of an inch in each direction from that middle line. And I'm only going to glue the bottom area and the top area, not the middle. So I'm going to get some glue in the bottom and the top areas. Then I'll get my D-ring in place, folding the edge to the three inch mark and pressing it well. You'll do the same for the other side and it should end up looking like this. Now, since you'll be sewing it onto another piece, you won't be able to see the markings on your machine. So I like to mark an eighth of an inch from the edge on both sides and that'll be my stitch line. Now for the piping, you'll need to cut two pieces that are one and three eighths of an inch wide and at least 32 inches long then two one eighth inch pieces of cording that are the same length and you'll get the cord in there then you'll cut one quarter inch slits
foot so that the piping is able to curve around your base pieces. You'll need a presser foot that's able to get right up next to the cord because the edge of the fabric to the cord is three eighths of an inch. So you need to get right up next to the cord to have the correct seam allowance. Before we get into the sewing, I wanna give you all a few notes. First off, I'm gonna be stitching everything at a three eighths inch seam allowance. Second, I'm gonna be doing a three millimeter stitch length for all of the seams and a four millimeter stitch length for all of the top stitching. And last, I'm gonna be using a heavyweight thread because I have an industrial machine. If you have a domestic machine and can't use heavyweight thread, just use what thread you can. It'll come out beautifully still. First thing I'm gonna do is get my lining pieces basted on for both base pieces. So I'll clip it in place, then I'll sew all the way around the edge, basting it on. Now I'll get the piping on, I'll clip it in place all the way around, making sure the edge of the piping matches the edge of the base piece. Once you get to this area here, you'll wanna cut little pizza slices in the piping so that it can compact and go around that curve smoothly. Once you get back to where you started, you'll trim the piping so that the two ends of the cord meet and you'll fold the edge of the fabric back so that there's no raw edge, then we'll line it up with the other and clip it in place. Then we can base the piping in place, making sure the edges stay in line. Now our base pieces are ready to go. Again, that cord should be sitting 3 eighths of an inch from the edge, which is our seam allowance. So regardless of what presser foot you use or how big your cord is, you wanna make sure that you can sew 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. Now I'll get the D-ring strap in place. I'll start by marking the middle of the bottom strip piece, which will be between one and seven eighths of an inch and two inches. Then I'll mark a half inch in each direction from that line as well, and three eighths of an inch from the edge on both sides. The top of the D-ring should match up with those lines. However, from the edge of the fabric to the top of my D-ring is seven eighths of an inch, but every D-ring is different, meaning you may need to adjust the strap length slightly. So don't take the length of this pattern piece as the end all be all. Regardless, I'm gonna tape my strap in place now, matching it with all the lines I marked out. Then I'll follow my lines I marked out and sew all the way around. When I get to the top, I'll pivot, sew across, and go back down the other side, and it should look something like this now. So you just sew all the way around the outside and where you started. If you wanna make it more durable, you can add a rivet in the middle right under the stitching on both sides. I'll be adding these spikes, which will also function as a rivet. Now I'll get the zipper in. The zipper will need to be 12 inches, and it needs to be a number 10 zipper because when I sew the zipper to the top strip pieces, it'll all match up to the bottom strip piece. So if you use a different size zipper, you'll have to change the width of the bottom strip or the top strip pieces. I set up the zipper myself, but you can use a preset one that's already 12 inches. If you need to adjust the length of your zipper, I have a video showing how to do that that I'll link below. I'll start by matching the right side of one of my top strip pieces to the right side of the zipper and I'll tape it in place. Then I'll match the right side of the lining to the back of the zipper so that the zipper is sandwiched between the lining and the main fabric. So once it's sewn and you flip it, it'll be a clean finish on both sides. So I'll sew those pieces together, still with the 3 8 inch seam allowance. Then I'll repeat those steps for the other side of the zipper, making sure that everything matches up on both sides. And I'll get that sewn in. Then I'll flip it and top stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge. And this top stitch will go through the top piece, the zipper, and the lining. Once it's done, it should look something like this with a clean finish on both sides. If you used a preset zipper, you're done now. I'm going to finish setting up my zipper though. Now I'm gonna combine my middle strip pieces. I'll start by matching the top strip to the bottom strip, right sides together. Then I'll take the bottom strip lining piece and match the right side to the wrong side of the top strip piece, sandwiching it like I did for the zipper. Then I'll sew those three pieces together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You'll do that to the other side too. Now it should look something like this. So you have a clean finish on both sides once you flip it and now it just needs to be top stitched. So I'll top stitch both sides an eighth of an inch from the edge, then I'll base the lining in place, sewing a quarter of an inch from the edge all the way around on both sides of the middle strip. Now it should look something like this, and we're almost ready to connect the base pieces, but I'm gonna cut these slits right up to the basting line we just sewed, and I'll do that all the way around on both sides. And just like I did for the piping, I'm gonna cut little pizza slices in the middle where it'll go around this curve to help it condense properly in that area. Now I'll match the middle of the 
middle strip piece to the middle of the base piece and I'll start by clipping it all the way around using the slits I cut to help spread it around any curves and again matching the middle of the top to make sure everything stays lined up. Now you won't be able to see the piping but you'll be able to feel it as you sew so just keep the presser foot tight against the cord as you sew around and that'll give you your 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I'll sew all the way around making sure everything stays lined up as I sew and just making sure you go really slow especially as you go around the curves and really making sure you keep your line as you sew around this top curve here too. Now it should look something like this and we're ready to get the other side on. So I'll clip it in place and we'll wanna make sure we leave the zipper open when we sew this side on so that we're able to flip the bag. Then I'll get it sewn on. This side will be a little bit trickier because you can't just flex it as much as you could before, but just take your time and make sure things stay lined up. Now that both sides are sewn on, I can get my binding tape on. You can use store-bought binding tape. I prefer to make my own. Regardless it needs to be an inch wide so at half an inch on each side when it's folded so i'll clip it in place all the way around it should go just barely past the stitching on both sides just do your best to keep it even then i'll sew it on around an eighth of an inch from the lower edge of the binding tape take your time with this and make sure everything stays even as you sew once you do the same to the other side it'll be ready to flip if you used heavyweight backing like i did this part is definitely tedious but just slowly work the bag through the zipper don't worry as long as you stitched every Everything correctly nothing is gonna bust open as you flip it once it's flipped you'll want to go around and work the seams to make sure they're all laying flat and facing towards the middle strip especially in the seam by both ends of the zipper you'll really want to press it to get that seam as flat as you can just take your time and work around the bag making sure everything looks nice and is sitting how it should now all that's left to do is make the shoulder strap there's lots of ways you can make your strap For the sake of time I'm not going to go into the whole breakdown but if you're interested in seeing how I make my shoulder straps I have have a video on that as well that I'll link below. Once you finish the shoulder strap, you're done. The bag came out super clean. I think it's a really good size bag. You can always add extra pockets like I did too. No exposed edges on the inside or out either. And I think that this bag is all around a really beautiful and well-structured bag. Before you go, I'm gonna teach you a couple more things that'll help you make this bag. And I'll show you the bag on body so you have a size reference. Like I mentioned before, I would say that this bag is in the intermediate range, but there is some things that you can do to make this bag more beginner friendly. So I'm gonna run through a couple of those things with you. Using a heavyweight backing like I did is what helps give some of the structure to the bag, but it also definitely makes things a little bit trickier because it stiffens things. So if you're not comfortable doing the heavyweight backing, you can always skip that part or you could just do some extra interfacing or something instead. I also did the piping around the edge of the bag, which also helps add some structure to the bag, but you do need a specific presser foot for it. So if you don't have that presser foot and can't get one, or if you're just not comfortable doing the piping in general, you can always skip that too. And that'll definitely make this a little bit more beginner friendly. Here's the bag on body. For reference, I'm six foot four. Remember the shoulder strap is adjustable. So don't really pay attention to the strap length in this clip, just the bag itself. I hope this tutorial was easy to follow. I'm still pretty new at this. So I'm always open to feedback from you guys to make the videos even better. If you wanna see some of my other work, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok so you can check things out there. If you want more tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe here. I'm gonna be posting at least once a month and I'm also gonna be doing giveaways for people that purchase my patterns and even people that just subscribe and comment here. So have fun making your heart bag. This bag truly has so much potential for customization, things that I did like adding the removable pocket, different things like that. So have fun with it, get creative with it. I can't wait to see what you guys make. Love y'all.